I want to bring a brief discussion on chapter 9, but first let me say it's an important matter. I'll repeat it later. Here it is. All contracts, whether in writing or not, are enforceable, except for a few categories. Please do, don't think that a writing is always required. Oral contracts, oral agreements, are fine for the most part. As we move into contract law, let's discuss the three basic elements to contract formation under common law. And as a reminder, common law is our system of judge-made law. When a court has no written statutory law from the legislature to follow, the court is free to determine the case based upon case precedents, in other words, cases from prior decisions. Contract law itself was formed primarily from cases over time. Indeed, the common law system comes from hundreds of years of judges deciding what is the fair or equitable outcome. In other words, our judges are free to look at case precedents, to look at standards outside of law even, in order to determine a fair and just decision. So for contracts, common law has for about 800 years formed the elements of contract law. And by the way, later in about two and a half weeks, we'll refer again to common law when we start our study of the Uniform Commercial Code, which is the law of contracts our legislature has adopted for sales of goods, retail sales. In my review of the three elements of contract law, consider a metaphor, a three-legged stool. All one needs to make that stool stand is three legs. So in contract law, we have one, an offer. We have two, an acceptance. And we have three, consideration. Those three form a binding contract. So look for those three elements in all contract problems here in the course and in your future careers as business managers. Consider that we constantly question whether those three elements exist in any problem that we face. In other words, as you see a problem, check the box for those three elements each time. Also, uh, they will be there when we move to a new body, our new body of contract law, in two and a half weeks under the Uniform Commercial Code. At this point, let me provide some guidance. When you think about contracts, don't use that word. Rather, start calling it what it really is, which is a meeting of the minds. Most people are lost in the concept of what a contract is. Therefore, to communicate the full nature of a contract when you talk about it with your business partners, with associates, with your subordinates in the future as a business manager, use the phrase meeting of the minds. So in 10 years out, when you're running your board of directors meeting as a president of your company, when you are speaking, don't say, we thought we had a contract or we did have a contract. Rather say, we thought we had a meeting of the minds. We knew we had a meeting of the minds with company X. That's easier to understand as a phrase. That phrase is at the core of contract formation. Indeed, it's what a judge wants to know, such as, where did you have your agreement? What was your understanding? Where in all of your dialogue, all of your negotiation was the meeting of minds? So to help you and to guide, I suggest you switch your language to that better phrase.